in the green. They both, they're local players here in Tucson, Arizona. They play out of pockets um, on South Wilmot in Tucson. And they play their BCA events there. They also, for the most part, all of them play their Monday night Fargo rate tournaments. Uh, this will, uh, this is set up with the Fargo rate handicap system. These two, these, uh, Jack Murray, for instance, has a 607 Fargo rate rating. Tracy Hammond is at 475 for a combined total of five, uh, for a combined rating of 541, as opposed to Eric Beeler, who's 600, and Raina Green at 454. Their combined rating is 527. So there's uh, 14 points difference, um, but they're both racing to four games. 14 points um, does not merit any kind of a handicap, so they're going to four games apiece. This is eight ball on the diamond seven foot tables. Uh, it looks like the Murray and Hammond team, they have a name. Okay. Murray and Hammond versus Beeler and Green. Um, and Tracy Hammond is breaking the balls. In scotch doubles, Tracy will break the balls. Jack will take the next shot if she pockets one. Since they did not, this is all, they shoot alternate shots, not alternate turns. So uh, she broke dry. The table is open. Eric Beater will come to bat, and um, he'll try to establish either solids or stripes. Of course, the first one that makes all the solids, and then the eight wins the game. Um, or all the stripes and makes the eight wins the game. Looks like he's starting with the one ball in the side pocket. The one or the two. And the uh, table is still open. This brings Mr. Murray to the table. He'll probably start out with that uh, ball to the side pocket on the right, just right of the cue ball. I believe that's the 12 ball. Or will, he, will he go up and take, will he take solids or take stripes? Lay out of the table, more than likely he will. Well, there's only one problem ball with the stripes, and that's the nine ball. That's down in the middle of the table on the foot of, at the foot of the table, the bottom of your screen. It's the only stripe there. So it looks like he's gonna take solids by starting out with the three ball, or the one next to it, which is, it's the three ball he started with. Tracy will come up and shoot either the four or the seven. Those are their only options she has is to shoot the four or the seven ball. Both of them straight right over. If she shoots that, she'll probably leave, leave Jack the one ball to the upper right hand corner if she just follows it straight. When she followed it pretty hard, but she still left the one ball in the upper corner upper right hand corner, he could choose to cut the seven ball. He wants to get there, I don't think he can get there from there. I don't, doesn't look like he can pocket the ball and spin underneath um, to the bottom rail. So he's gonna have to shoot the one ball next and play shape either for the seven ball or for the five ball in the middle or for the two ball. There's several options, let's see what he does. Pockets the ball. Yeah, it left no options. She has the two ball or the two ball. I don't think she can see the five due to the proximity of the cue ball to the 14, it looks like. The stripe between the cue ball and the five. Yeah, if she just stops it there, she leaves Jack on the six ball. But it looks like she's going to follow the ball. She's using up uh, above center English and got the cue ball a little too close to cut, but left the five ball. The five ball goes and he can, she, he can just stop it for Tracy there. You usually wanna have your stronger player in a, in a Scotch doubles team take, take on the harder shots so that way they can execute the shot and also leave position, an easy position uh, shot for his partner. Always trying to leave the angle to make it easy for the partner to get position on the next ball. 
He's got a, he's got a severe severe cut on the f on the six ball, so he probably chooses the five, which he is. And this is just a stop shot. And no, he brought it back, which is fine. But now Tracy's going to have to run this cue ball between the thirteen and the. It looks like. Um, thank you. The ball on the upper part of the table on the left side by the rail. 13 is closer to the middle. The eight ball's dead center almost. And so she's going to have to either shoot this um, seven ball down on the left hand rail at the foot of the table uh, or shoot the six ball and get him shape. He's and she's got the angle to come between those balls. If she just uses a little bit of left English and cuts this ball in, she should float right between those two balls with a soft stroke. And it's not a soft stroke. She's coming all the way down to the bottom of the table. But she hit a ball and almost scratched. Uh, Jack may be able to see this and run the cue ball into the nine. He might be able to make this ball. It's an extreme cut, and it's, it's close to the rail. It's just off. It looks like it's just off the rail. Can't really tell for, from where I'm sitting and from the monitor. This is a very, very low percentage shot. This is a tough shot. But it's one of these shots that can be made rather easily, but it's not a high percentage shot, which is kind of... <laughs> I, Let's see what he does with it. See if he can make it not scratch. He made it nice. Now don't mm. come on down. If he misses the, the kiss on that ball, the cue ball would have come over for a possible shot on the eight. She still has a possible shot, but there's a high probability of scratching in the side pocket. If she tries to play it in that upper right-hand corner, more than likely the cue ball will go. And actually, if she hits it, if she hits it good and doesn't hit it thick. The cue ball will probably go between the corner, upper left hand, upper corner of the side pocket and the 12. I don't think it'll scratch. Oh, nice, nice try. Nice, nice try. That was so close. But now this leaves um, Reina Green an open table. Now they just have to connect the dots and not miss any balls because they left, uh, Tracy left the eight ball in a very, very good location in that corner pocket. But Jack and Tracy are at the mercy of Eric and Reina. Can they execute the run out? Sometimes some of these easy shots look a lot harder to the players than they do on the screen. As their minds are, 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 are um, engulfed with thoughts like, if I miss this, we lose. And remember, these are all amateur players, so um, that is a possibility. Should probably take that uh, 12 ball in the side pocket. And as soon as I say that, she comes over to look at the other ball for the corner pocket. I like the side ball, the corner pocket, because to the side pocket, I mean, because the cue ball goes two rails, and you're going to be straight in on that ball on the left side by the rail, and you make that one, stop it, shoot the 13 in the middle, the 10 in the same pocket, and the 15, or get on the 15 whenever, and you have everything in the middle of the pocket. This table now opens up very, very nice. This is almost just perfect. Just a little bit of a stop, so it just stops it perfectly. If he actually shoot, it, it's perfect. He, he's, it's great there. Had he gone forward a little more, and then left her straight in on the ten for the side, it would have been much better. As I look at the table, because she could shoot the ten, stop the cue ball, shoot the thirteen, stop the cue ball, shoot the fifteen, um, and not have to run the cue ball. Shooting balls to the side pockets, as she's doing now, it's going to travel the cue ball. And if it doesn't come up high enough, it doesn't have a shot. See. Whenever you're shooting shots at the side pocket, if your angle isn't just right, you're going to have to work harder for an angle on the next on, the, on your position shot. This is a tough shot. 
she did. Oh, I thought I didn't think he made it. It hit the corner and slid in. Uh, made it and got perfect shape on the 10. And this should be a, a little chip shot or a little two foot putt with a shot on the eight coming up. Again, keep in mind these are amateurs, so um, even though they won't, they probably won't miss shots like that. First game goes to Eric Beeler and Raina Green in a race to four. Now Fargo's telling us that uh, Beeler and Green are actually an underdog in this match. Let's see what uh, winning the first game does for them. You see the percentages under their names. 55% means that, uh, according to Fargo Wright, uh, Murray and Hammond have a 55% chance of winning this race to four, while Beeler and Green only had a 45% chance at the break. Now, things have changed tremendously. It's only four games, so uh, Eric and Rayner are now at 61%, uh, as opposed to their opponents, 39%. Uh, chance of winning this match, odds of winning this match. And they have the break. Sounds like something went in. Looks like it was the one ball and something else went in. So we have one, two, three. Made two solids. The table is open even though two solids were pocketed. Leaving seven stripes and five solids on the table plus the eight. Let's see what she chooses. She'd like to take solids because she only has to pocket five. They only have to pocket five balls instead of seven. But sometimes the lay of the land calls for the the higher quantity of quantity balls and she made that she made that very nice but do the cue ball back too far um, she probably was trying to get shape on the 13 or the 9 and she's come back too far and so Eric is left with a shot on the 9 ball either in the side or the corner pocket and that's about all he really has he could shoot the 13 to the side pocket but that's a rather difficult shot I think he'll He'll wind up on this nine ball and cut it in the side. Steep. Fired in the nine, got a good shot on the 15 or the 10. Well, Eric's working through this rag pretty well. They've gone a couple shots apiece. Looking at the 10 ball. He's got to get up for that um, 
Uh, 12 ball up on top. 14 ball, excuse me. By the three. In the upper left hand corner. It looks, looks like he's pretty straight in. If he could get the cue ball up by the side pocket on the right, he would like a shot. I think the best thing to do is just stop the ball right there. He's going to try to improve it, which is going to lower his odds of making the ball, even though he's straight in. <laughs> he was at such an angle that it was hard to cheat the pocket and get the cue ball up table. So he's had to settle for this. And actually, this is a tough shot, but she has to come off this ball. Jack's got a shot on the two ball on the side, the five ball in the corner. I think he'll shoot the two on the side, bring the cue ball out for the three in the upper left hand corner. Then the five, then the six, seven, and then the eight. Well, he's going with the five ball first, it looks like. The five ball will give him shape on the deuce. He'll push the two ball to the right, and it'll also provide a safety in case he misses. Good execution. She's got, it doesn't really matter what Tracy does with this as long as she pockets the two ball because Jack can pocket you the three or the seven on the right hand side up upper upper right hand corner. She did that very nice giving Jack the option of any three of the balls he wants to pocket. One of the main things in playing eight ball or even your rotation games is leaving the cue ball in the center of the table. You probably have an easy shot or a fairly easy shot on 70% of the shots. When in doubt, leave the cue ball in the center of the table. See here, he's got to come back to the three or the six. So he's got to come back about where he's at now. He didn't. Gave her more distance on that six ball than she'd like to have. Had he come back another foot and a half and given her a choice of shots, um, or closer to the six, this percentage of making this ball would be a lot higher. And this could have lost him the game. Should have lost him. The, should lose him the game. Reina makes these about 99% of the time. For a 2-0 to zero lead. And 2-0 to zero it is. It's now Jack and Tracy's break. Oh, no, it's their break. I'm sorry. Winner breaks. Alternate break format, um, Jack and um, Tracy will have the break now, but they're trailing two games to zero. And we'll see what Fargo has to say about um, their chances of winning this match. It's 22%. Dropping, dropping steadily. When they were favored at the beginning by 5%.
have a nice little crowd of people watching this this match. We got um, some people on the side here. You have um, James Bentley and his wife Abby. You have Keith Nickerson and his wife. Um, some people from Phoenix, right standing, sitting right behind uh, Raina and Eric. Then on the left behind Tracy Hammond. Um, um, I don't know the gentleman behind there, but they're locals here in Tucson. No, they're not. I think they're from Phoenix also. A lot of Phoenix players. But we have more more Tucson players this year than than last time. So I broke the balls, made something. I heard something drop in. There goes one. There goes one. It's a solid, so the table is open. Tracy will choose either solids or stripes. I'm not sure if it doesn't look like the five or the seven go. But she doesn't really have a shot. No matter what she turns out, what, where she looks, she doesn't really have a shot. The seven ball doesn't look to go by the by the five in the side pocket, which she's looking at now. She's calling the ball in the side pocket. Looks like it's going to be the combination. Low percentage shot. Tough shot, but makeable. The table is still open. She only gave up two shots. And her choice is either the one ball or the seven ball. The uh, one in the lower left-hand corner pocket or the seven in the... Um, left-hand side pocket. He has nothing else to shoot at unless he chooses to play safe, which I doubt he will do. I think I like shooting this ball better because he can shoot the three ball next. They can shoot the three ball next. Nice and soft. Now you just get the ball off the rail a little bit, and uh, uh, Raina will leave him with a choice of either the seven ball or the two ball or the five ball. Two side pocket shots or the one in the corner pocket, the right-hand corner. She has a little bit of an angle to get the cue ball off the rail. She can probably, if stuns it halfway decent, she can get the cue ball up to the spot. Pretty close. And this provides him with options. The last ball they want to play will probably be the sixth ball. The, the, the solid, the green solid, the lime green solid on the right hand side rail by the lower right hand corner pocket. If they pocket that and can stop the cue ball, they'll have the eight ball directly into the side pocket. <coughs> that would be their key shot. So run the three balls up on top and get a straight in shot on, uh, on the sixth ball to play the eight ball on the side. Nicely done because he, now here, she can pocket the seven, leave him straight in on the two ball, stop the two ball and leave, and, and leave uh, get a shot on the eight after shooting the six. Doesn't want to go too far, just to the rail and off the rail a little bit. That's too much. That's too much, and it went too far and hooked him. From a very, very easy out, has she just barely come off the rail? It's one of the things about diamond, the seven foot tables, and you have to be careful with these rails. The rails are quick, they are very quick. And she, you know, she, little adrenaline flowing, more than likely, overamped the shot and came off the rail and got behind the ball. He's gonna have to try to kick the two ball in. Go to the side rail and come back and kick the two ball in. If he happens to make it, he'll have a shot on the six, but the odds of making that ball are rather low, but possible. This is a Hail Mary shot. He has no choice. He can't make contact with any other solid to play safe, so he really has no choice but to try to kick this ball in. Ouch, that is, he's trying a next to impossible shot. 
he saved saved from giving him ball in hand but this jack this will leave jack a very easy safety off the 15 behind the 12 or just roll up to the nine ball and put him up against the wall of balls on the bottom there he wants to make sure not to leave a shot on that two ball and he did not but the one thing he did by accident was to block a shot on the six I, yeah, it does not go. Yeah, he, he, he got a little cute with that uh, breaking him up, and that ball, the 10 ball came back and hit the cue ball in the open. Nice, nice try. What a beautiful. If she would have just nibbled the six ball, she would have had a shot. Uh, Eric would have a shot on that six. And she came very, very close to shooting that perfectly. Just a little nibble on the six ball, and she's in business. They're in business for, for a 3-0 lead. Now it looks like um, uh, Jack and Tracy will have their opportunity to try to run the seven balls left on the table. Because Eric, Eric will try to make this ball and get a shot on the eight. This ball might go in the side pocket. One rail across side. Anytime you elevate your... He went to the corner. Made it, but look at the cue ball. Very nice shot to bank that ball in. Very, very tough shot to get position on the eight. Even if he drifts down and clips the ball by the rail, the other ball will still hook him. It was tough. But he had nothing else. Except for the Hail Mary shot. He made the Hail Mary shot, but missed the Hail Mary position. I can't even, um, I don't see anything positive that can come of this. But the only thing to do is take that four, uh, take that uh, 11 ball and push it up against the 10, maybe, br uh, you know, tie him up. And not give up, you know, he's gonna, she's going to give a ball in hand regardless. You might as well try to tie two balls up for your opponent and make them, um, make them play, uh, something other than simple shots. I would start with a nine ball to the left hand corner pocket, then the 11, then the 14, and from there. You see she's got those three balls tied up. That's the only problem ball she really has. And she's starting in the right place. Start with the nine, the 11 should be next, then the 14, then the ball on the side, probably the 10 in the corner. And just up and down the 10 and, 10 and uh, 12 ball down the street there, up on the upper right hand corner. And uh, they still have to execute shot after shot after shot without missing a ball. Jack wants to leave her a little bit of an angle on this 14 ball so that she can get the cue ball up for the balls uh, further up table. She might be, he might be going for the, no, he just left her right there. Now, if she just follows this, it gives him a shot on the 11 ball in the side pocket. The ball in the middle of the table for the side pocket or the corner. And then he'll leave her um, either the 10 or the 14. I believe this is the 14 ball. She's come. Oh, he's in a little bit of trouble. Not much, but a little bit. Shoot the ball to the side or shoot the ball to the corner. If he shoots the ball to the side, the cue ball has to come down. It's going to hit the 14 down, but the one below the 8. It's probably going to hit that, and he may, unless he hits it just right, he may not have a shot. He could get behind the 8 for the ball in the upper right-hand corner. He won't have a shot on the 10. I think he's better off shooting the ball to the corner pocket. And apparently Jack thinks so too, because he's called it.
and made it. And Tracy's options are to shoot the ball in the upper right-hand corner or the ball to the side. She's much better off shooting the ball to the upper right-hand corner and just stopping the cue ball. Moving it as little as possible. Just make the ball perfect. And now he can get her a shot on the ball on the side before she can stop it and leave him a shot on the eight. Well executed. He's got to keep the ball on the rail or run it over. He's kept it there perfectly. But left her an angle. Again, going back to side pocket shots. If you don't get the right angle for your side pocket shots, you're going to have to run the cue ball to get position on your next shot. And she's going to have to run the cue ball up and back. And did she run it too far? She ran it too far. He's looking at a very severe cut or bank. He could play a safety. I doubt that he will. Um, the safety would be to just leave the, cue, the eight ball on the bottom rail in the middle of the table with the cue ball going up to the top of the table. Or bank the ball and call it in the lower left-hand corner. He could go to the side pocket. And it's, those are his choices, but she had to run the cue ball up and back and ended up in an unfavorable position. Basically what some might call the 50-yard line. Three inches to either side of that ball, and he has a much, much easier shot. taking the cut which brings the side pocket on the left and the side pocket on the right into play made it very very well done nice shot and um, keeps his opponents from going 3-0 and uh, slice the deficit to one game and race to four and we'll see the percentages down the bottom the Fargo rate change it is now Eric and Raina's break. Very nice shot by Jack. He made that ball with a gun to his head because he misses that and it's probably 3-0. In an alternate break format, coming back three games to zero is tough. Means you'd have to win four games in a row. Well, you haven't even won one. I guess somebody could figure the odds on that. I don't think I'll try. Nice shot by Jack. A little clap of encouragement by Eric to his partner. And Rain will break these balls. He'll smack them. Crack them. Trying to get to three to one. Open table, nothing on a break. Is that, I believe that's, no, they, they both made a ball on the break. The only game that was dry was the first break. After that, they both made one. This is the fourth rack, and nothing on the break. Surveying the field, and Jack is looking at probably taking solids. If he gets the right angle on the six ball, which is uh, the seven ball, which is next to the three ball on the left hand side of the bottom rail, he'll have an angle to come into the three for shape. If he bumps the 14, he'll be perfect. If he bumps the ball by the spot on the right, he'll be perfect. Well, he went a different way. Um, Which worked. Looks like that uh, six ball will play to the right hand corner pocket. And that's about all the shot she has unless she chooses to cut the three ball. It's a steep cut with the cue ball coming into balls so she's not sure where it's going to go after it hits those balls. 
because she can't slow it down or stop it. She's going to come off the rail after making the three if she shoots it. And into the 10 or the 6 or in between to the 14 and maybe scratching the lower right hand corner. What is she? I thought he made a solid. She's shooting the one ball in the upper left hand corner. Nice try. Would not have had a shot had she made it. Well, I take that back. There's a 7 in the corner and then the deuce. Uh, keep in mind, I'm standing probably 20 feet from the table, uh, about two feet higher than the table. So I might miss some calls. I might miss some angles that I don't see. I might miss them because I don't see them, and I might miss them because of the <laughs> how far back I am. I don't know. But Eric's at the table now trying to... Survey the field and make the best of the stripes. Going with the 10 in the corner, upper left hand corner. And a skew ball, not quite reaching the side pocket. Or going into the side pocket. He reached it, just didn't go into it. 14 in the corner. And she can either stop it or run it back for that 11 ball. She has to be careful that if she stops it, he's going to do the 11 ball first. Now, if she comes off the rail, he won't have a shot on the 14. If it comes off the rail just a little, she's not going to like it. And I think he's okay. He is okay. Now he'll shoot the 14, then the... Oh, is that the 15? I get those balls confused. Shoot the stripe on the, on the rail there. He has no choice. That's the only shot he has. It looks like he has plenty of room from down here, but he's kind of looking at it like maybe he doesn't. And stripe to the left-hand corner. You've got to worry about that ball by the side pocket. It's awful tight. The nine ball only goes to the upper left-hand corner. They can get that now if she slow rolls this over. Just roll it and roll the cue ball about a foot and a half. Missed the ball. Shots available for Mr. Murray will be the seven ball in the middle of the table there for the upper right-hand corner. He probably could play safe if he chose to by just hitting the left right side of the seven ball going over by the two behind the two uh, he's going to pocket this ball and play safe behind the uh, let's see what he does with the cue ball but he's going to pocket the ball for him to open up his three ball and six ball he might even call the six ball behind that 14 Pocket their ball and have his six ball ball in behind it. He's going to do it with the bank. And this runs his cue ball all the way up to the one ball. Oh, he went this way. Had he followed the ball, used the rail, he goes all the way up to the one. Which would have been a much better shot. Although Eric can, Eric can probably bank this ball. It might go. He's got to slide it in off the rail. He could also try to uh, pocket the ball in the corner. Uh, off the nine, I think he can see the nine. He can carry him the cue ball off the nine ball. Like so. And now he's... Uh, they're their master of their own destiny because you make this ball and uh, it's shape on the nine. It could be game time for a three to one lead. It, it appears to be straight in, so this cue ball is going to be tough to get off the rail. I don't think she can see anything up to the left hand corner. She might be able to see a piece of the nine. I'm not sure. I can't tell if she can go by that three ball or not.
she's going to play this ball and just soft hit it. I don't think she's going to do anything with it because it's pretty straight in and she can't move the cue ball too much. She would ideally like to get a shot of the nine ball for the upper right hand corner. And he does have a shot. He, um, he can cut the nine ball up to the corner. He's got a big pocket because of the one. The one makes that pocket very big on the right side. Which means he can, he can play this ball with a little bit of left English and go two rails for position in the same corner. He's made it. Left her a bank shot. Oh, she might be, actually she might be able to just cut that in the side. She'll go right in the side pocket with it. And this should be a three to zero lead. Three to one lead, excuse me. Good shot by Eric. But having that one ball out there made that shot just so much easier. Didn't use it, but it was so much easier having it there. There it is. Now just for the eight ball. And as you can see by the angle provided by Stephen Kwan, uh, nice camera work. And it's three to one. Beeler and Green over Murray and Hammond. Hammond to break, trailing one to three in the race to four. Their opponents on the hill. There's no tomorrow for these two. They've got to win this game if they want to stay in this match. as they will the next game if they win this one. And then we'll have a hill-hill match. Trailing one to three, Tracy Hammond to break the balls. Alternate break format, race to four, eight ball on seven foot diamonds. All this will be available for viewing on YouTube at a later date. Broke the balls, nothing yet. A big clump of balls around the spot. Looks like a one pocket break. And um, looks like Eric will start off with the stripes and just run this cue ball. Cut this ball on the right side there into the right-hand corner pocket, run the cue ball into the stack to open things up. He's better off doing it than having Raina do it. Or will he choose solids? I would choose stripes. Let's see what he chooses. If he chooses solids, his only shot is that six ball, the lime green ball on the right side of the table in the upper half. He's going to go into this ball with a little bit of left English, hopefully, and try to come up and hit between the seven and the eleven ball. That's the solid and the stripes right behind, right to the left of the eight ball, which is in the middle of the table. Oh, he went all the way around. He should have a shot on the nine. And he does, he does, he does. Do's and don'ts. He does. Keep in mind, people, we're in, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're in Tucson, Arizona, at Casino Little Soul. Q Sports Internationals. Arizona State Eight Ball Championships. It's the BCA Pool League, USA Pool League. It's powered by Fargo Rate. Their combined Fargo score, 
for Murray and Hammond is 541. Meters in green is 527. 14 points difference. They're racing to four. It's probably more of a safety than anything else. Apparently, uh, Eric touched the ball, and Jack says, just leave it where it's at. <laughs> and they got to chuckle out of something. As they're all chuckling in the background, a little nervous energy. Eric and Rainer are thinking, we're about to win this. And Jack and Tracy are thinking, <laughs> we got to win this. Get her done. Jack is a devout U of A Wildcat fan, as you can tell by his U of A shirt and his blue, red and red and blue attire. As they might say in Tucson, Arizona, you bleed red and blue. And right now it's more red than blue because they're trailing one to three. Their opponents are on the hill, one game away from victory. They need three games. She's going to break up some balls and play a safety. Well done. Opened up. Now see all the stripes except the one right by the eight ball. The cue ball is kind of frozen too. Except for that stripe, they're all open and they all have a pocket. The lower left-hand corner. Tracy's option is to kick the six, uh, ball by the side pocket and hit a rail afterwards. If that cue ball can slide it down by the two or up to the corner pocket, leaving a much tougher shot, it would be nice, but she has to hit a rail after contact or they get ball in hand. Mr. Beeler would be glad to take ball in hand and try to do something with that 13 ball and the eight ball to open them up and be able to run those four stripes by the lower left-hand corner and win their fourth game, clenching the match. She's calling the three ball. doesn't have to leave a shot if she makes a good hit. But she made a good hit and slid through those balls. It's wide open for Mr. Beeler. He has a choice of the 12 ball or the 12 ball. And does he come over and up for the 10 and the 11? Or does he shoot him that way? I don't think they go that way, so he's going to have to come back. Ideally, like to come back right into that uh, ball, right next to the cue ball. Just draw it straight back into that ball. He'll have a shot on the 10. Go around to that ball on the right side by that 6 ball and shoot that. Um, oh, it won't, it won't go by the 11. Never mind. That won't work. Let's see what he does here with this. She's going to have to shoot the ball to the side pocket, which is nice because it will remove the four ball from the eight, opening up the eight, and probably leave a shot. If it doesn't get behind the three, the five ball, it'll probably leave a shot for the 10, 15. She sh should be playing the ball to the side pocket. Or banking the 13 ball that's below the, uh, the eight. Playing the ball on the side. Made it. Now, Eric wants to move this ball. He doesn't want Rainer to do it. He wants to do it. And he has an angle to do it. He can play the 11 ball with a little bit of left English, not much. Um, come up off the bottom rail, nibble the left side of the 11, breaking it out, hitting the 3 ball, and getting a shot on the 10. Easy to say, harder to do, executed it perfectly. Now Reina has to get him a shot on that 11 ball. 
This is a follow shot, this follow stroke. Two ways to do it. Follow it hard so the cue ball travels to the side rail, the bottom rail, and up for the 11 in the left-hand corner pocket, or just to the bottom rail and get to the side and bottom rail and shoot the 11 in the side or the corner pocket, upper right-hand corner pocket. Oh, she didn't hit it hard enough. But he's got a shot. He's, he can cut this ball. He won't give, I don't think he'll get a shot on the, on the eight, though. He can cut this ball to the left-hand corner pocket, run into the four. But his cue ball is going to travel away from the eight, and he won't have a shot. He'll have a bank shot. No, he won't have a bank shot on it. Wow. Tough, 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 tough place to be here. But he's got to just try to make this and do what he can off this uh, four ball. Did it nice and soft. He ended up with a shot. It looks like he did. This is for the game. She's got a shot on the eight. Nice shot on the uh, ball. Came off the four and came right over for a shot on the eight in the lower right hand corner. Nice shot. Well done, Eric. Nice angle work for the camera work. Gets us a uh, shot right down the pike here. And she's got a nice shot for this eight ball. Slight cut. Just don't go over to the side pocket. Nice and easy. Jim for the win. Four to one. Eric Beeler, Raina Green take the first match in the 2016 Arizona State Eight Ball Championships Scotch Doubles event on the stream table.